start the recording. So for the folks who are listening to us uh, through, the, um, through the recording, you can also see the chat that appears by clicking on the purple arrow on the bottom right hand side. So today's presentation is uh, Feminist Economics in Practice, Inclusive Gender Responsive Budgeting, the Tools and Techniques for Finance and Non-Finance Community Leaders. Our presenter today is Naima Iman Chowdhury. She is the Women's Leadership and Gender Specialist here at the Cody International Institute. Naima is an expert in the area of gender equality and women's leadership and she has experiences working in Asia, Africa and North America. Naima is the lead for Cody's Global Change Leaders course and also facilitates participant learning in gender justice and in women's leadership and other Cody courses that we have. She's a seasoned practitioner in bridging the gaps between policy and practice and she also represents the Cody in women's rights policy groups in Canada and has made significant contributions to the areas of women, peace and security in feminist aid and policy discussions. So she's worked as a gender equity advisor for Global Affairs Canada, for Action Aid, for Care Inter International, to Anita and the Swiss Contact. Naima's more recent work involves policy and programming on, on gender equity and women's leadership towards a gender responsive health system in Central Asia, and particularly in conflict affected areas in Afghanistan, Pakistan, Tajikistan, and the Kyrgyz Republic. Naima's work in the area of economic empowerment and inclusive economies has significant impact in the lives of women and the marginalized in many remote areas of Asia and Africa, where sustainable change through policy advocacy and amendments have been implemented. So currently Naima is uh, broadly researching the, the area of feminist economics, particularly participatory budgeting that uh, involves inclusive gender budgeting. So today Today's session is all about uh, the learning uh, the tools and techniques for inclusive gender responsive budgeting for community leaders and how to simplify um, the feminist economics and bring it to a practice level. So as Naima is going through her presentation, if you have questions or comments, I do ask that um, you um, put them in the chat and I will moderate the discussion. Naima is going to present her information and then we'll be opening it up for discussion. So Naima, if you can click on the video so that we can actually see you as well. Hello. And you need to, you need to actually click uh, to share. Yeah. and I'm going to turn mine off. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Good yeah, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are with us uh, today. So uh, it's uh, uh, a lovely Antigonish today, sunny Antigonish. So greetings to all of you. Uh, and thank you very much for joining us today uh, with this discussion of feminist economics in practice and I would like to share the recent research that uh, I have done with uh, inclusive gender responsive budgeting and try to develop tools and techniques for community leaders and uh, I would look forward to get your um, uh, inputs in that to enrich that research so I would love to know your comments uh, in the comments box. So let's start. Um, uh, so uh, before I start the discussion, uh, it's important that I say something about this research that why I have done this. So uh, in uh, say gender budgeting is in discussion from at least from last 30 years. Uh, but uh, there is few gaps that what uh, we have identified that uh, in the policy level people they are aware about uh, gender responsive budgeting but it's not always that community uh, practitioners community leaders are uh, have uh, they have the tools and techniques how to develop and fit into the policy discussion 
for gender responsive budgeting. So that's the uh, area that I felt strongly to develop some tools and techniques that will help the community people to bring their needs and uh, their rights and their actual facts uh, th that uh, of development that they can uh, bring for budgeting system. And uh, uh, so uh, last year, actually, um, I, I worked in, uh, in Kodi and as well as in Bangladesh for uh, to develop these tools and techniques. Um, and finally, I am presenting to you for your inputs. Um, uh, I would like to uh, acknowledge uh, the um, uh, um, for uh, who who I don't know. Thanks. So I, I would like to acknowledge uh, the fact that uh, Code International Institute uh, has great uh, support for this research, uh, as well as Web Foundation Bangladesh, Roxana Hawk, who worked uh, as alumni for this research. I did my field work in Chuadanga district in Bangladesh, Chibonnagor, and local government. And um, uh, with uh, public uh, private representatives, uh, all departments of local government, and uh, I would uh, um, uh, also acknowledge uh, Professor Anu Mohammed, Dr. Caroline Shainaz Hussain, um, Dr. Sharmin Sh Nilormi, and um, uh, uh, I would uh, also like to mention the government of Bangladesh who uh, supported for this uh, research with their information, shared their information in so many ways. And some of the organizations like Action in Bangladesh Steps Towards Development, Nari Prabhuti Shangstha, and uh, yeah, thanks uh, very much to my family as well, to all their support. So uh, what are the major economic practices uh, around us? Uh, before I start feminist economics discussion, uh, let's see. This capitalist economy is the, the most important uh, one right now that is dominating the world, where um, most of you know that capitalist uh, economy uh, it's like more market driven and private sector driven where government has very little control in the capitalist economy because it's encourage people to invest uh, in the market and work for that. Uh, market economy is again is, uh, is uh, supporting a capitalist market where the government has little intervention uh, in the central planning. And this is uh, the opposite of a centrally planning uh, economy in which government decision drive most aspects of a country economic activity. So uh, in those two discussion, we have seen the market and market dimension is controlled by mostly um, individuals. Socialist economy is basically uh, talking about the social aspects where government and public sector has fully controlled uh, on economy and uh, there is no sort of uh, individual uh, space for individual decision making. It's um, uh, uh, kind of uh, support to the um, uh, most uh, imp important decision that government takes for the citizens. And uh, coming to that um, uh, way of uh, modern market economy, which is a kind of mix uh, economic system where uh, government, uh, private sector, public sector work together. And most of the countries uh, today working with mixed economies, uh, if you see where public, um, public investment is also kind of having partnership with um, uh, private sector um, development or investors. So coming to the point of feminist economics, uh, Feminist economics is the critical study of economics and economies with a focus on gender error and inclusive economic inquiry and policy analysis. Uh, where we find this is the difference in feminist economics with capitalist economy, market economy, and socialist economy, where it's focused on gender. What is the gender equality uh, existing situation? And is there is any sort of inclusion in the economic policy and system? Along with that, I would like to mention that uh, feminist economics works to analyze and address systematically the issues of gender equality. So it's talking about with a certain system 
and inclusion from the basic unit of the economic spheres where family and individual belongs. So the previous discussion, we haven't seen any sort of uh, discussion where family or individual focus uh, are coming. So this is the most inclusive and caring economic system to develop and nurture humans and the environment. So feminist economics is talking about all sort of economic activities, supporting the market system, supporting the family system, the dynamics of relation, uh, human relation as well as environment. So it, it considers gender equality, which is uh, mainly the gap between men, women, boys and girls is talking about gender equity, which are the steps for equality situation and inclusion where we find that there are so many diversity in a society, in, in a community and ident um, diverse identity for people and feminist economics considered to include all those diverse uh, um, the people in the economic activity. So it doesn't, it doesn't uh, say that people would be able to participate in the economy, where it's saying people will able to participate with their ability, but again, the economy will work for people. Pe uh, economy will work to include people in the economy. So it's kind of responsibility is uh, vice versa responsibility between the economic system and the people. So just an example that how sometimes we exclude people from the discussion. So is with regards to age, sometimes we often forget when we uh, do the development uh, planning discussion, particularly the economic discussion, we often forget the, the age uh, variation uh, of the population, like uh, elderly people are not often coming in the discussion, adolescent age uh, who uh, actually have some kind of barriers to raise their voice are excluded often from the economic discussion. Sex, uh, men, women, what are the differences? Economic system doesn't consider that. Uh, cultural variation, social variation, religion, uh, uh, then geographical um, differences, economic background, politics, gender, sexual orientation, occupation, physical differences, mental differences, all those things often we forget to uh, being in the discussion and often we forget to um, being those discussion in the development planning. So those people remain untouched. Uh, those people are not supported by the economic system in general. So sometimes, uh, yeah, we see that um, uh, the, the UN system, the NGOs activities and also sometimes governments our awareness is important to bring those discussion in and they are coming but it's not that we um, can see them because they remain uh, kind of um, uh, in a hidden situation. So people sometimes it, it ha happened that people who has different political um, ideology, the mainstream uh, people who have different political ideology um, are often exclude them um, intentionally, so uh, we, we can see. Um, so feminist uh, economics uh, consider feminism is a range of political movement, ideology, ideologies and social movements that share a common goal to define, establish and achieve political, economic, personal and social rights for women. So, this includes seeking to establish all productive and reductive rights. So feminism, when it's talking about productive and reproductive rights, is also bringing the situation of women, men, boys and girls in the discussion. Uh, the major consideration of feminist uh, economics is uh, intersectional feminism is much more than just feminist buzzword. It is a decades old term. Many feminists used to explain how the feminist movement can be more diverse and inclusive. So 
this discussion of feminism, intersectional feminism, is not only talking about the differences between men and women, it's also bringing the diversity and diverse situation of social stratification, such as class, race, sexual orientation, age, religion, creed, disability, and gender, which are included in the consideration of intersectional feminism. And this feeds into the discussion of feminist economics. The other part of feminist economics is unpaid care work. All the economic system that are existing are not supporting or talking about unpaid care work. So feminist economics is talking from the household level, family level. So where unpaid care work is a huge um, work that is mostly done by women uh, and elderly. So how that is uh, bringing, that can be bring in the discussion of economy, how the support system can be developed and how the equality be between men and women can bring to really uh, look forward that how the care economy can be supported uh, is, um, is a discussion, is a major discussion of feminist economics. And from 1995, from the Beijing Declaration, this unpaid care economy and care work is coming in the discussion. But still, there is a long way to really address uh, this um, care work in the economic discussion. I would like to mention some of the principles of feminist economics. Uh, there can be no such thing as a definitive list of the principle of feminist economics, but it values enter into economic analysis at many different levels. So when we talk about the market dimension, when we talk about the policies, when we talk about the government, national government, local government, bringing to the com community level how community looks like, how families are working. So it works in so many different levels, excluding any of the levels. The household is a locus of economic activity. It is a major differences with other economic system and the beauty of feminist economics. Non-market activities are important to the economy. So non-market activities it doesn't mean that always the process are guided by buying, selling process, production, consumption, but it's also talking about non-market economy. Power relationship are important in an economic system. So it's power between men, women, power between different groups of people are important in this economic discussion. A gender perspective is central to the study of economics. Is that economic system ever about the gender differences? Is the economic system is influenced the, to reduce the gaps? Those are the discussion uh, important for feminist economics. Human beings are complex and they are influenced by more than just material factors. People uh, compete, compare it and care. Government action can improve market outcomes. So it's not excluding market, it's not excluding government in the discussion. So it's, it's not talking only for social welfare things, it's also important that it's focusing on the market dynamics as well as government action and all the levels that people are there to join in the economic system. The scope of economics must be interdisciplinary. We discussed uh, previously that diversity and interdisciplinary action is very important for um, feminist economics. So coming to the point of what is budget, all of us are very aware about the budget is an estimate of income and expenditure for a set period of time following a plan. So it's for starting from the family level. There, there is a budget in our, all of us we have, individual level, personal level, personal budget can be. Community budget is also there. A budget for a country, national system. So all those things are important in this discussion. So uh, what is gender responsive budgeting? 
gender responsive budgeting is an important tool of feminist economics. So what we talked about feminist economics and we have seen that it doesn't always uh, depends on the market buying selling process. But how, what can be the tool for feminist economics? So gender responsive budgeting is a major tool towards feminist economics. Gender responsive budgeting is used to reduce gender gaps within a particular context. So gender responsive budgeting, sometimes we feel that, okay, there is gender gap between men and women. So all investment should go to highlight the high, uh, advancement of women. But we also need to keep in mind that gender responsive budget works to reduce the gaps so we need to understand what are the gaps. First, we need to understand, identify the gaps and realize that and what would be the intervention can support to reduce the gap. And that is gender budgeting. Inclusion and gender responsiveness, where is the gap? When I was working uh, in, uh, I will give you an example from my country, Bangladesh. Working with the national level and the policy level and also the local government and community level, what, uh, what I found that national level, the policy uh, people, the government officials uh, in, in the ministries are aware about gender budgeting and they are trying to make sure that the budget works for equality uh, and inclusion. But when it comes towards the, the level of uh, community development to the level of local government, we have seen that there is a huge gap in understanding and also community people are not that much involved because it, it makes them okay. It's a kind of tough discussion and they um, are not that much involved. They are not our and uh, though they have lots of things to share and bring in the budget, but it's it, uh, sometimes they feel that this is not their business. So this is the gap between the national and policy level as, uh, with the community level and local government. So uh, inclusive gender responsive budgeting's goal is to ensure benefits, rights, and justice for all groups of people in the public expenditure for development. So it's talking about the public expenditure, it's people's money, it's people's fund, people's rights should be ensured. And this is the most democratic process that people can see their share, people can enjoy their benefit. There are few components, five uh, uh, key components. Now I will uh, go to the components as well as the steps where we can uh, discuss about how to really support the tools and techniques. What would be the tools and what, what would be the techniques for gender responsive budgeting? So first, uh, for gender responsive budgeting, inclusive gender responsive budgeting, the first and very important step would be participation and consultation. So if the moderator, if the organization and the local government can make sure that people's participation is there, people means who? It's not only community elites. It's community leaders, elites, men, women, adolescent group, elderly groups, uh, people with disability, people from minority groups, people uh, from uh, different languages, people with uh, different political views, people from far geographical location, all of them are involved. Their representation is involved in the consultation process. So if the consultation process cannot be done in this, on the same day with so many people, it can be done before the budget process where people are um, free to bring their voice in the discussion. And the, most importantly, uh, the environment, the safe environment is very important for any consultation that people will not feel afraid. They will not feel fear that they cannot talk. 
what is what is their need they are able to say that safe environment is very important for inclusive gender responsive budget Uh, the second uh, point would be analysis of situation and budget. This is the major component of uh, uh, inclusive gender responsive budget. So how the analysis would be done? Uh, if we uh, uh, say that the representation, representation from all sectors, representation for major community sectors, major means it doesn't mean that other people will be excluded. Representation is important. The groups of people are important where they know about their situation and they can identify what are the problems they are facing, what are the needs they have, what are the development agenda should be for them, what will work for them. So that analysis with discussion with an environment, supportive in, um, environment is important. So analysis of the situation for women, boys and girls uh, in the sectors is compared with a budgetary analysis along with the policy analysis and priority. So it's situation analysis as well as what are there in the policies, existing policies, and is there any priority from the government? So those uh, things would be discussed. Number three component would be identify the priorities. So when they will identify the gaps, they will analyze and identify the gaps. And uh, in the sectors that hinder inclusion and gender equality and set priorities to reduce that. So there is a specific budget and limited budget for community development. So how that budget will work and how um, flexible that budget is and what would be the best use of the budget that can be discussed in the gaps identification and setting the priorities. So if there is five things are identified as the priority, but what would be the top priority that would that should come from the uh, community discussion? Number four is the forecasting of budget. So community will forecast an approximate budget along with the local government. So the representation of community and local government, where well, local government can say, say that for education, uh, see this is our budget from last year and we are hoping that this is the budget for the next year. So community can forecast along with the government that this would be the budget for the next year, hopefully. So we need to set our priority, say, including um, uh, to uh, make sure that there is uh, a support for girls in the education system. Maybe it's a major problem in the global south in particular that girls sometimes having uh, problems uh, difficulties with regards to their toilet facilities in school. So how the uh, budget can address that, uh, that can be a priority for them. So what would be the budget for that? How much money they need? So that's the sort of priority and um, uh, making sure that, uh, that uh, the enough fund is there uh, from the local government. The last one would be identifying the support strategies and techniques for further implementation and monitoring. So it's uh, in this uh, uh, system that uh, in, in these tools where uh, I try to sh uh, show that how community is involved and community is also encouraged to contribute and community is also encouraged uh, in the monitoring system implementation. So. Uh, this is a um, particular beauty of uh, feminist economics, that feminist economics encourage uh, the contribution with the ability that they have. So it's not social welfare or it's not full support, but it's also encourage how much the community or individual can contribute. So here, the contribution can be voluntary. Here, the contribution can be monetary based from the community where they support the implementation as well as they support the monitoring system. So if we see um, at a glance, what would be the components of inclusive gender responsive budgeting? First is participation and consultation. Second is analysis of the situation and the budget. Third is identify the priorities. Fourth is forecasting the budget. And then last one is identify the support strategies. It's from the local government, 
and the community and techniques for further implementation and monitoring. So now I will show you some of the photos, um, pictures that I, uh, I uh, had when I was doing this uh, field research in Bangladesh, particularly in Chuadanga district. Uh, uh, first photo is uh, from the consultation of the uh, Union Parishad, the first tier uh, of um, local government with the women elected commissioners. And uh, this is with the local government. This is a design uh, and try, I try to include the people uh, with disabilities uh, from different age, what, were, what are their major concerns, bringing that in the discussion. It's uh, inclusion of uh, uh, in the discussion of a minority group uh, of women and um, what, are, what are the major gaps that they, they find in the discussion of budget and what is their priority. Uh, here we can see the discussion within a school uh, with the um, community uh, leaders, mostly who are involved in different, different sectors. Health system and the discussion with the nurses and the doctors and the elderly of the community. With the youth group and also the health system in, in, the, in Chuadanga district. So um, it's, I, I tried as much as getting data from uh, all uh, group of people with different um, identities, different age groups, sex, so that I, I can bring in the discussion. So now we'll go, uh, what are the steps that I followed to really build these uh, tools? Uh, there are eight steps. There are uh, eight steps, um, and those are coming from the components that I discussed previously with you. So, um, first step is um, uh, the situation analysis of um, uh, of people's condition and position. So, how the situation of each individual is or a group. What are the uh, condition of their situation? What are the condition of the community? and how their position can be changed. So those discussion comes in the first step. And the second is uh, uh, situation analysis with the policy and practice. So first one is people's life. Second one is the policy and practice. And third one is identify major gaps. So it's coming from the situation analysis, the major gaps, and what are the situation of gender and inclusion? So coming from the whole situation analysis, focusing on explicitly gender and inclusion situation. And fourth one is the in-depth analysis of uh, priority, selecting priorities. So what would be our priority? And it's uh, including the community groups. For fifth one is sustainability issues. Number six is establish a participatory monitoring system with local government, with organizations and community. So is impact analysis where community will be able to see the impact. And the last one is submission of the priorities from the people and the community for a budget process. So let me uh, describe some of the uh, steps uh, with you. And uh, uh, one sector that uh, always coming to our mind, and that's where it's easy for us to understand. And I try to find uh, this one from the education sector. So if we see uh, that education sector, uh, primary and secondary level, so if we see uh, education sector in, in a global south, any of the country, what is happening in the primary sector? So with lots of uh, initiative from the government, and the community, and the entire um, women's movement, uh, even, um, uh, organ I mean, even system, what we have found that there is lots of achievement in the primary education system. There are few uh, struggles in the secondary education system that are coming in the report. Let's see and how we can find out what is the situation happening in primary and secondary. So if we see that first discussion will come, what is the situation for boys and girls in primary education? 
So that is our first discussion. Is there all equal working well for boys and girls or is there any differences? And then the discussion will come, what is happening in the secondary system? So if primary says education, we can say, yeah, all children are going to school. They are getting all, enough support up to grade five. There is uh, like uh, the, the percentage um, is uh, increased a lot, but, and there is no such gap between boys and girls. And we can, if we can see what is happening in the secondary education system, what is happening about boys and girls? Is there any difference? So if there is any difference, then the question would be, why is the difference? So now I will share the chart with you that how we see the situation of boys, girls uh, who have no sort of, I mean, it's like they have no other difficulties. What are the situation for them? Then if we see girls with disability, boys with disability, girls from minority community, boys from minority community, what are the situation for them in the secondary education? So for access, is boys and girls, all of them are getting access to secondary education? What's happening to girls with disability with regards to the access? What's happening to boys with disability with regards to access? Is minority community getting access to education, secondary education? Then participation, how much participation is there? Participation with regards to that children are free to participate in the school, encouraged to participate in school. Retention, up to grade seven, eight, what's happening? Is there changes in the percentage? And then why? Teachers' response to different groups. Is teachers are responding with responsibility, with understanding to the girls, boys with disability with my, uh, from the minority group with different religion, different uh, geographical location. What is the response from the teachers? What the uh, skills and capacities that teachers have or teachers need? So when community will discuss with this chart, they will identify with the groups, with the uh, groups from the school, with the groups from the secondary education, what is their views, what is their idea, and what they think what is needed. So those type of exercise be done. So some of the points that I have written here, but you are also you can also add when you will do this budgeting uh, in the in the community. So I said about environment, about awareness, sensitivity, etc. So uh, I also mentioned about infrastructure. RAM, separate toilets, those are important for certain group of uh, children, uh, girls, people with disability. Law and order situation. So secondary education, lots of um, community having problem of law and order situation where girls are uh, becoming the victim of uh, if teasing um, or um, any sort of uh, violence. Uh, it, it can happen on the way to school, inside the school, there are so many things can um, uh, influence the girls' participation in the secondary education. So how those things can be addressed, identified through this chart. And environment in the communities, community supportive enough for uh, uh, girls and boys coming from the minority group in that school. So in expense, cost of education, materials, transportation, etc. So this is a huge question in the um, uh, communities that if there is enough money, so we know that sometimes uh, there is uh, examples coming that there is huge poverty, so we cannot invest for girls' education. So girls remain at home, boys are going to school. Sometimes it says that there is no transportation system to take our children to school. So all those things can be uh, discussed and identified and analyzed in uh, through this chart. So then coming to the, uh, when uh, they will work with this chart, then they will uh, identify these barriers are in the local level only, or barriers are coming from the national level. So is there is any local level like local environment, uh, uh, environment uh, in, in the community, law and order situation, 
and uh, poverty or people's mindset, those things can be local barriers. National uh, uh, barriers could be the, uh, the policy intervention. So teachers do not have skills because there are no allocation from the education ministries or a local um, government education departments to invest for teach, um, build teachers' capacity uh, to develop, um, to address uh, uh, children with disabilities. So that is national level barrier, which influence the local level participation of children. So now I will uh, come to the um, point of uh, discussing how this, uh, what are the identities with regards to gender equality? So gap, how they will identify the gap? Who are experiencing those countries? So coming from that particular chart, they will identify who are the people experiencing that gap. So people with uh, children with disability experiencing that barrier. It's not that always all the children experience the same. So it's difference with people who are benefiting from the existing situation. So somebody will is benefiting. It's not always intentionally. So when uh, there is no such of um, uh, accessibility for disabled children, so they are suffering. They cannot join in the school, but the people who do not have disability, they are enjoying the benefits. So it's not that it's intentionally, but the system remains like addressing the mainstream. So is there any policy and program intervention introduced to reduce the specific gender gap? So again, it's coming to the policy discussion. What are the barriers there? What are the target group in the policy? And how the policy is benefiting the groups? So the number uh, three would be, is there any policy and intervention to reduce the gaps between the majority and marginalized people, population? So again, it's coming to the point where we can see the investment for the marginalized people and majority people. So it's identify who are our involved and the policy uh, relation to that. Is there any policy or program that community can suggest? If there is no sort of intervention from the government and uh, community group can suggest some. So, so after this, uh, the community will work to identify the issue initiative and they will identify the impact. So if like uh, community identified in Chuadana that the barriers for uh, disabled children is security and also the transportation system. So if the transportation system can be offered to them, so how that will support their uh, participation in the school system. So uh, the community discussed that we can um, uh, see, uh, we can look for uh, transportation support from the local government budget, but to maintain the transportation system, the community are willing, uh, can um, uh, contribute. So it's a kind of win-win situation for the community, that community is willing to invest as well as they can uh, try to uh, work for uh, voluntary to support the disabled children um, education. But the, for the primary investment, that should come from the local government. That was their demand. So how they come with this priority suggestion? So under uh, after analyzing all the situation, they can select that this is our priority because our children with disability particularly girls and boys remaining uneducated because there is no support system. So that is their priority. That is education sector in Chuadanga identified. So allocation analysis, when they did the allocation analysis, they showed that how the allocation worked before for the education system. So it's along with the local government, they saw that most of the allocation is in the construction um, uh, for the schools, uh, from the for the toilets or maintenance of the uh, schools, but there is no specific allocation for um, uh, develop the skills and expertise of the teachers. That if that investment is done to educate uh, the teachers with regards to how to address the disability issues or uh, the minority, how to address the create the safe environment for the people, 
uh, the st students uh, and children in particular, girls in particular, that can make a certain change and bigger impact in the community. So they, uh, they calculate the allocation such a way where the social dynamics come, where their participation come, and also the investment from the local government um, and, and also the contribution of the community um, comes in the discussion. So in the same way, if we see the employment sector, uh, this consultation um, should in involve the women and men from the different age group that they can talk about their, their barriers, con constraints and opportunity in the, in, in the employment sector. So income and in employment, what is the difference in men and women? What are the difference uh, in minority group? Are they getting opportunity to uh, come in the employment sector? Well, we discussed about the agriculture sector, and this is the huge sector in all, most of the global south countries. So if you think about the agriculture sector is men, women, both are getting the same opportunity from minority group, the people who are elderly, are they uh, um, uh, getting any sort of space to um, offer their labor and can uh, income uh, get some income? So those things are uh, come in the discussion. So if we if we uh, identify, try to see the identify for from marginalized people where we can see the family, social, cultural, economic situation, all those just uh, dimension to identify the employment sector, what are the major barriers are there. So for uh, this chart is again for the agriculture sector where we can see gender and inclusion analysis for family conditions. So this is very important to identify the situation of men and women. And uh, as we talked before, the feminist economics is talking from the very beginning of the individual level and family condition. So the community, when uh, I did the workshop with the community, I found that they are the, the most barrier they identified is that for women. And they say that if women are going for work, who will take care of the family? Who will take care of the children? So how the economy and the system can look into that. So uh, with discussion, they also identify that if there is a support system where me as a facilitator try to see, um, show them the options that if the women in the family do not um, uh, take care, I mean, a major, major time, if she cannot take care of the family, she needs to go for employment, then what are the support system that they can think so they come with that idea. So if there is certain support system, so support system digging to that is coming. That is there any uh, sort of place that they can keep their children uh, for, with safe environment and uh, support and the support system coming as a daycare facility, which is common in uh, many countries in the uh, northern part of the world, but not always in the global south. So how that can be supported? So it's um, those type of um, discussion came and then uh, employment opportunities as well as equal wage infrastructure, law and order situation, all those things uh, to discussion. So how you will uh, bring this suggestion uh, in the budget? So in the budget is important that they, they think about to reduce the gap. So it's as example is child care is, uh, is their priority. So what could be done uh, to reduce the gap? Is it a child care? What is the support initiative? Who can take care of that? What is the policy suggestion? Is there any space that policy is saying that it can support the daycare facilities? If not, how community can influence the budget of the local government and community can participate? So when they were saying, they also mentioned that uh, people who are elderly can also work in that uh, those uh, child cares and they can get and they can earn some money. So it's important that they are looking towards those dimensions where people who are excluded already from the employment sector are again come back in the employment sector and earn some money and also support their livelihood. So it's not only supporting the women for the employment sector, not only supporting the ch children for the safe environment, it's also ensure the community's participation, ensure the people who are in different age group. 
So, uh, talking about all this um, discussion, the sustainability analysis is very important uh, for, for these tools. And where uh, the major participation of community organizations as facilitator, mainly NGOs, and the government is very important. How they look the situation together from the very uh, beginning, from the consultation process, it should be start, in, including all in the discussion. Community needs to feel that ownership. And mostly budgeting process you do not uh, include the community, but community needs to understand that this is their right, justice, and that's where they need to participate to ensure their rights. And government, the local government also needs to acknowledge that the budget and the public expenditure is for people. So how that can be done with in, uh, the involvement of people, the community, all groups, and also how people can participate in the decision-making process. So establish a monitoring system. It's also involving community, selecting a representative from the groups, and how uh, communities can be formed with the local government, with the facilitator organization, and from the community groups, how to monitor, monitor each of the intervention for education system, but with the focus of uh, people with different groups, girls, boys, um, disability, minority. So all those type of views can bring in the monitoring system. So it's important that representation from the community is there. So how the community will identify the impact analysis? This tool will support, um, it would be very helpful for community to see the impact with time, that how these things are working. So as there is a kind of involvement already, um, uh, already confirmed from the uh, from the community local government and uh, facilitator organization so they can see with time that when the budget is allocated how they planned how they uh, started the investment and how they can do the monthly reporting for to see the impact analysis and what are the changes uh, are coming in the community so those um, things um, are uh, that community along with local government can see so it's very open open process open budget and um, highly democratic process so after all this discussion designing the monitoring uh, that how they will be responsible there is uh, the submission of the priorities double budget and plans so they will revisit the uh, priorities. They will identify the roles and responsibilities, confirm the monitoring system, confirm expected results, and revisit approximate budgets. So it's not always the budget is uh, a kind of st um, uh, static for uh, or the same budget that every year um, uh, uh, local government get, but how the, the budget can be, um, I mean, forecast and uh, it can be discussed before the sub they submit the plan. So who will use this tool? As we discussed uh, previously, it should be used by the local government to make sure the community participation from all groups is there, from the community group to ensure their rights and justice and support the um, uh, gender equality and inclusion and the organizations to make sure that community uh, development is working with regards to ensuring the right, uh, rights and justice in the budgeting process. So money works for people, expenditure works for people. That, that is the goal for um, uh, inclusive gender responsive budgeting. So I will show you some photos now that were in the workshop how the local government and the community people came together after um, having all those consultations came together and did the chart analysis to uh, identify gender and inclusion situation. And then they come with their final suggestion. So you, you can see the representative from all groups in the discussions. So this this um, is actually um, uh, the presentation, and I um, 
already uh, I talked about the tools and techniques. I uh, provided some of the references here. Yeah. So now it's to you. I'd like to thank you very much for your participation. And uh, is there any question, comment from your side? I would be very happy to respond to that. So folks, uh, you'll notice that on the bottom right hand side of the screen, you'll see a purple triangle. If you click on it, that will expand the sidebar window. And then you'll be able to click on the chat balloon. So if you'd like to type a question to Naima, you just put it in the chat box and press enter and it will appear. But I see that Mozano has raised a hand, so I'll get you to turn on your mic and ask your question. I had. So Moselle, you'll notice at the bottom of the whiteboard screen, there is a uh, microphone icon. If you click it once, it will turn on your microphone. You'll have to make sure you allow access to your microphone. So Mozamo, are you still there? I'm not, we're not hearing your question. So perhaps you can type your question in the chat button, in the chat box. We're not seeing your microphone turn on at all. So while Mozamo is figuring that out, is there anyone else who has any other questions or comments for Naima? I have a question for Naima. I'm wondering um, what kinds of specific results have you had in communities? Like, what is the um, what is the feedback from participants after they have implemented a uh, a, gem, a a budget that is gender inclusive? Uh, thank you very much, Wendy. Um, uh, actually. It was a great feeling when I did the final uh, sort of um, introduction of the tools in the uh, workshop. Uh, so uh, just to mention before that, it was not a budget period uh, in Bangladesh. Uh, it was December, but we had the consultation before that. Um, so uh, the, it was it was a mock exercise with uh, uh, with the community representation with the local government, uh, public representative, uh, organizations, and local government officials. So when uh, the, they were involved in the consultation, when I did in the groups, and finally when they came for the workshop and they uh, did the chart work uh, the, uh, and the analysis part of that, and they this what they said they were very happy and they said it's so easy for us and why don't we do that now why should not we uh, take our priority to the government right now so it was so inspiring from for me that they they feel that this is workable for them this is easy for them this is um, i felt encouraged and that is what i wanted to do i wanted to make sure that the gender responsive budgeting works for people and it, it should be a uh, simplified tools and techniques and they uh, what they said that this is very simple and this is well uh, they have understand well and they can work with that and they are ready to work and that is what i felt a great uh, I, I had the great feeling and i feel that if it can be before the budget session uh, for the community consultation and the process the budget, it will work uh, um, uh, for the community development and particularly inclusion yeah. and gender equality. Good, good. Now I have uh, Mozamel's uh, comments in the chat. Thank you, Naima. It was nice listening to you and your focus on local government budgeting. And Anika uh, Jacobs mentioned greetings from Cape Town, South Africa. Lovely to see you and hear your voice again, Naima. Sorry, I missed most of the presentation, but thanks for the PowerPoint presentation. Um, and that actually uh, reminds me that um, this uh, presentation has been recorded. 
and you will be able to uh, to find it on the Cody International Institute's uh, YouTube channel and we will also be posting a link to that recording and Naima's PowerPoint presentation to Cody Connects, our graduate uh, our graduate learning network um, platform. Are there any other questions for, or comments for Naima? Go ahead, Nina. You want to grab your microphone? So just a one click will oh, one click will turn on your microphone at the bottom of your whiteboard screen. There you go. Go ahead. There. Okay. Can you hear me now? Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. Hi, thank you, Wendy, and thank you, Naima. Good afternoon to everybody. Um, thank you so much for the presentation. Indeed, I can imagine how rewarding the experience must have been in Bangladesh in trying out all these tools and techniques. One question that um, I'd like to ask um, is towards the end of, of, the, of the process, as, as you gather data and um, and determine the needs of the community, particularly women and girls, um, do you see do you see a possibility of having some sort of a donor pledging session? Because I understand that towards the end, um, we get we get to the point where we where we know the price, for example, of the projects, which would mean a lot for. For, for women, men, boys, and girls, and um, and and in for pieces of information about this would inform the budgeting within the community. But do you see the possibility of aside from aside from having from having a gender budget budgeting process? Do you see the possibility of external actors, for example, donors coming into the community? Because there's also a possibility that once we see the final cost, um, it the cost might be higher than than what than the existing resources of the community, and so maybe having some external donors can could also help pitch in and fill in the deficit. Thank you very much, Nina. Um, uh, and uh, uh, this is uh, one one thing that um, local government budget is coming from the national uh, government. And the local government uh, normally they cannot receive any sort of donor money if it doesn't uh, channelized from the national level uh, budgeting process. But uh, uh, the, but there is kind of individual, individual contribution is always encouraged uh, for local local level community development. So where the community also discussed about that, that uh, if there is anything that local budget cannot support because there is limitation of this budget. So how we can do that and how actually there are, there are few community members who raise that. So the thing is that they need to see the gaps that was so visible through this tool that these are the gaps. So people feel encouraged because they are identifying the gaps. So if the budget doesn't cover, at that time they propose that how we can also make sure our contrib contribution because they want to see the situation change. So how that win-win situation can be supported where the contribution from local communities are made, that is uh, important. About the donors uh, with regards to from outsider donors, uh, uh, just to mention that uh, so many uh, institutional donors and funders are working to uh, support the gender responsive budgeting system for long. Uh, and that's uh, to the national level government, uh, along with the national level governments. And I had a plan actually to have a national level workshop to involve all the donors as well as uh, the governments. Uh, uh, though I had discussion, individual discussion. But I think that this, if we introduce these tools uh, uh, to this um, uh, policy level people, it will uh, get more support with regards to implementation of these tools. So there I see the role of the donors where they can, uh, they can support the national level and to some extent the local level government to implementation of the tools where the practice uh, would be ensured, the um, equality and inclusion should be ensured through the budget uh, budgeting system 
that is where I see the role of the donor. Uh, but for uh, investing, uh, I, I, I still I think that the investment from the community with, with our asset-based concept, that is very important that community can see their role, community can see their um, ability and their, uh, their, um, uh, it's, it's there. So it's, it's also involving the government uh, as well as it's, it's them who will change the situation. Thanks, Nina. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Are there any other comments or questions? Um, I do notice that Mazamal has uh, made a comment. Um, public consultation is done by UP through Ward Shovas, but due to lack of resource priorities are often not addressed, hence consultation fall in vain. What about people's views on, con on contributions in, in people, what about people's views on contribution to supporting local resource mobilizations? Are the community really prepared to monitor the spending of the budget? Poor and the marginalized have less voice and lower capacity to analyze allocation. How can this tool be applied by them with such poor capacity? Yeah, thank you so much, Mozammel White. So raised all these things. Uh, yeah, resources uh, always a concern, and uh, but it's also important that the uh, the resource that is allocated is properly used. So most of the time, the resource allocation is not planned with the community. So it's uh, uh, by the people uh, who are in the local government uh, departments um, and uh, sometimes uh, um, uh, sub-district uh, representatives. So uh, the most uh, important area that's inclusion of community is important and they can see what the resource they have and how they can plan. And um, yes, minority people's voice is, is really an issue. So um, that's where the consultation in different levels is important in a fair uh, free environment. That is what I mentioned in my first step, that the environment should be created. How the minority people can really raise their voice, they can bring their voice, they can say what they need. So those things with the consultation process depends on the facilitator and the organization that how they will uh, create that environment, how they will give them the sp uh, space which is safe for them to raise the voice and um, uh, for monitor and spending that's where the framework is has been developed where the participation uh, should be ensured by people community local government and local representative so again that exercise needs to be um, uh, needs to make sure by the facilitator organizations that community is really participating. Otherwise, it will not work in, in such a way that uh, uh, that is showing in the tools. So participation is very important. Open space is important. Respect to people's opinion and respect to citizen is important from all sides, from the facilitators, from the, from the local government. And, um, and that's where this tool will work. And thank you very much. And we, we understand the local level challenges and the resource problems, and uh, also sometimes less willingness to really open the democratic space for people is, uh, is, a, is a great challenge. Yeah. Thank you very much for responding to, to that comment. I noticed that Nura is uh, typing in the chat. If you also want to, in, instead of type, if you want to pick up the microphone. Oh, there she is. Um, what is your biggest learning, in, learning engaging in such discussions with community in Bangladesh? Oh, the biggest learning is uh, so positive. Community, particularly women, and people who have the marginalized status, I mean, given by the society and culture, they like to talk. They are willing to talk. They have lots to share. They are, they are looking for development. They are looking for change. And that is the biggest thing that I feel, that there is no sort of 
uh, if you if you can create the environment, if you can give the uh, um, them the space that their uh, uh, their voice would be counted, and if, if you can give them that sense, they are ready to talk. They are ready to work. So that's the, the that's the learning process. Uh, I would say that um, from these tools uh, and introducing this. And the other thing is that thinking about the other, uh, like local government, public representative, sometimes we, we have some, some mindset is there that they will not listen. It's not always true. You also need to facilitate the discussion such a way that they feel that you trust them. You believe them. You believe them in a, in a such a way that they are representative and they are trying to involve uh, people in the development process. So combination of these people, community, marginalized group, particularly women, and then bringing local government, public sector, private sector in the discussion and bridging that gaps is very important. And that is the learning process for uh, when I introduce these tools. So it's openness of people, willingness to work, to change. Yes, along with this, uh, also what what would be the responsibility of the facilitators and the organizations? Thank you, Nora. Great, thank you. So we're we're out of time. So I thank everyone for their participation. If you'll notice in the chat dialogue right now, there is a clickable link to um, to provide a anonymous very very short evaluation of our webinar we use these <coughs> these feedback mechanisms to help us uh, plan for additional webinars to help us improve our own practice and also if you have any suggestions for webinars that you or your colleagues would like to do we most definitely welcome uh, your feedback there and Lozamo said, once again, thank you to Naima. And thank you all folks for joining us. I shall turn off the recording. <laughs>